Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my Thursday stream where we do a little bit of whatever I want. Today we're going to be playing the latest remake of Miss. Yes, they remade it again. There's a 2021 version. Welcome in, Craig. Oh my gosh, I've missed you so much. I saw an elixir the other day. Oh, thank you so much, Jane. Thank You're you so the much best. for the Prime sub. I love being at the stream. I love you too, Jane. I love you being here. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed with emotions. Craig, I, I'm so sorry that I missed your first stream back after you took such a long break. I did see it in Elixir, but it was too late by the time I noticed. I was like, dang it, I missed him. Um, I missed your streams. Glad you're back. And welcome in, um, Koneko. Oh, hell yeah. Oh my God. All of, all of my friends are here. All of my friends are here, guys. Welcome in, Koneko. Welcome in, Jane. Um, welcome in, uh, Kendra. Thank you for that whistle. I do think I'm looking particularly sexy today. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right, y'all. Um, so we are going to play Mist 2020, but I've got a couple of things I want to tell you first. First, I want to say thank you so much to... I'm reading this to make sure I say the name right. Infamosti, I think is how they say it. Um, for supplying that intro music that we had, that lovely dramatic intro music. It was based off of uh, one of the sound puzzles that's in Mist, and I asked them if I could use that for my stream today. So there's a link to the, the video on YouTube. Um, after the stream, go give it a couple of views, you know, just put it on repeat for a little bit so we can have some of those, because um, he worked really hard on it, and uh, I think he did a really good job of adapting that particular musical note section. Yes, I was so excited when I saw it. I was like, oh, should I ask, should I ask? And I, I got up the guts to ask. I was like, can I use this for my stream? And he said, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so thank God um, that he said yes to that. All right, the other thing we, we love to do, of course, um, at the beginning of all of our streams is start out with one of those fun uh, you quizzes. So here's the one we're gonna do today. Here we go. Oh my God. Thank you so much for the one tier two year. subscription. <gasps> one year. Oh my God, it's been one year. It has been one year, Lunar. Love you so much. Lunar, you're my favorite. Oh my God. Okay, thank you guys for, for the subs right off the bat. I really appreciate it. Okay, here's the quiz that we're doing. It's um, you go to the forest and start a ritual with one simple purpose, learning which tree language you speak. Because um, as anybody that has played uh, all of the Mist remakes as they keep releasing them knows, the newer versions of Mist never have enough trees. So I thought this was really appropriate. Apparently there's a, there's a content warning for general unreality. Um, I don't really know what that means, except if, I guess that they're saying that trees don't really speak. Well, joke's on them. Trees do speak. God. Okay, let's go. All right, the day has come. You're ready for the ritual, but the timing was perfect. You knew when the sun would set and you got out of the house. You got out of house perfectly to be in the spot the moment the sun reaches the horizon. Oh, okay. It didn't matter because there was nothing to keep you home as long as you planned to stay. You walked out way too early in the end. It was right and wrong at once. Were your plans bad? Were your plans good? You don't know. You followed them anyway. <laughs> I feel like that's how I am most of the time. Okay. Um, the timing is weird. You're not exactly late, but you're not too early, but something is off about it. Ooh, you were too late. You planned to go out earlier, but you didn't. It wasn't right, wasn't right, but it was the thing you did. Planned and executed with perfe perfection. No place for mistakes, no place for hesitation. I think we're going to say the timing was perfect. I don't know. I feel like that speaks to me the most. I like this one too, um, the weird, but I think perfect is better for me. Okay. The trees, they speak. Oh my god, Moisty's subscribing too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, and been I'm a subscriber for three you. months. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, guys. Okay. Uh, apparently there's a hype train starting. Y'all are welcome to do that if you want. No pressure though. You definitely don't need to give me a hype train if you do not want to. <laughs> uh, the trees do say thank you, Moisty. Okay. So the trees, they speak, alone they hum, low song of solitude. And Craig is subscribing too, thank you so much. Wouldn't miss this for the world. I did go back, Moisty, and watch your Mist stream. It was so wonderful watching somebody experience Mist for the first time. All right, alone they hum, low song of solitude. In a forest they sing, and you are to join them. You step on the path that you know by heart. After all, you've traversed it many times in preparation for what's to come. You walk into a forest so dark you could justify using a flashlight, but you don't use any light, you simply don't. You walk through the forest, your grandparents remember being young. You can see the places where young trees have been planted and it makes you feel alone. Oh, that's one, that one's sad. You walk through a forest so old it could be ancient, green and mossy, with tree trunks too big for a single person to hug. Oh, I love that one. You step into a forest, you step out, you find a different way. Not a single way is right. You try several times before they choose a way that is, before you choose a way that's acceptable. 
You step into a gathering of trees growing so tight you have problems to move through them. It will pass, it will pass, but for now, it lasts. I like the ancient one with the giant ass trees. All right, but before you reach the place of ritual, you have to travel through woods not even animals want to travel through, but you prepared for the harsh terrain. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll talk more about it once we get to the game. Once, you know, I like to start out with the quiz to give everybody time to get in here. Um, but uh, once we get into the game, I'll talk a little bit more about that moisty. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. All right, maybe the clothes you've chosen aren't the best fit for you, but there's no shame in that. You promised yourself you would take a friend and go buy something new, but in the end, you went alone and got nothing. You chose the oldest things you had in your wardrobe. If it breaks, it won't matter. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for all the gift subs, uh, Moisty. All right, Jed's got a sub. Koneko's got a sub. Some other people that I don't know have a... That's not true. I know RBC Games. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. <laughs> um, Parago Sugar Gaming. I don't know you yet, but we could be good friends later. Same thing for Weary TR. I don't know you yet, but we could we could be good friends later. I believe in it. Thank you guys. Oh my gosh. Moisty, you're the best. You're the best. All right, whatever the fuck you wear, it looks very unpractical and somewhat stupid. You feel awesome in it though, and you can move well enough. Honestly, just pants and a hoodie are enough. It's enough if you make holes in them by accident, it happens. Probably that one. I literally wear yoga pants and sweatpants everywhere I possibly can. I only wear real, like real clothes um, if, I, if I have to. So everywhere gets yoga pants or sweatpants, depending on how hot or cold it is outside. Whatever you choose wouldn't be a pr as perfect as you want, but still you tried. The clothes you wear are perfectly fit for such an adventure. There's a sense of style, even if you've chosen them for practical reasons. Thank you so much, Kay. Thank you so much. Say, uh, I would say thank you, though, to, uh, to Moisty and to Lunar and who else Who else did the subscri subscription? Uh, Jane, Craigus, thank you guys so much. All right. In your travel, a seemingly inconspicuous item aids you. A hair tie. It's on your wrist reminding you that you can change whenever you feel like it. All right, Kay, I got you. Oh, I have a special hydrate this time. We got these um, Bud Light seltzers, like a holiday pack. They're not good, I have to say. Um, maple pear is the one I grabbed. It's not good. So that's why I'm still drinking it. I'm going to try to finish it by the end of this stream so I'm not wasting booze because can't do that. A spoon, a simple spoon, definitely not that. Okay, a plushie, a memory of your past hidden in your backpack, grounding you to this reality. I feel like since I have all the plushies on the bed, I almost have to choose that, but let's see what the others are. A small medallion with a floral pattern on it, you feel its weight on your neck, grounding you in the moment. A knife with a wooden handle, you own it since forever and it feels important to have it with you. Oh, I love that I've had the knife for forever. I think that, that part's awesome. A rock you found on your way from there to here, you keep touching it and remembering what you're going to do. I think, I think I've got the plushie grounding me to reality, though. Ask Urk about which seltzers are good, to be honest. Seltzers are his weakness. Oh, mine too. That's why we got this. I love seltzers. Um, absolutely love them. Thank you so much for the howl, Lunar. Oh, that's right. There's going to be more trees when we get the game started. All right, I got to finish this quiz. <laughs> I love you guys. Ah, Okay, here we go. I didn't realize this one was going to take a while. Finally, you reach the place, a simple and small clearing that's been waiting for you for so long. Around it, there are six trees. Which one do you greet first? Pine, ash, oak, a linden. Ooh, a tree in full bloom outside of its time frame. It has to be greeted first. Yes. Um, a birch or a yew. No, no, no. We're going with the linden. Absolutely. 100%. Hate it when you try something taste awful. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, we only got one case, thank God. And I don't have to drink them all by myself. But yeah, Craig, they're not good. They're not good. <laughs> Wish I had grabbed a white claw. We got some of those in there too, but... I didn't. I wanted to try the new seltzer. Not good. Um, preparing for the witch ritual, you reflect on the past. Come to think about it, do you ever figure out how did you know that what you hear is a language of the trees? Ooh, it was a feeling. So much research. You just knew. Weird as fuck, but you knew the trees. Or hey, is that you speaking? And you got an answer. Oh. For a long, long time, you didn't. It was important. You wanted it to not be there, but finally the trees themselves told you. The voice you heard was constantly at the back of your mind. But when coming closer to the forest, the words became clearer. Oh, I love that one. You got your tree? What tree did you get, Koneko? Tell me, tell me. Oh, you knew for ages at this point. We simply can't remember. Oh, no, no, I like this one. I knew for ages. I like that. All right, the ritual has begun the moment you stepped outside. But to continue it, you have to sacrifice something. A shadow, you've overused it already. Your plans, the change is happening now. 
a clay plot, pot, your favorite plant used to grow in it. Your spit, part of your true self. Oh, okay. An old hammer, it was given to you by your family. A strand of hair, a symbol of remembrance. Uh, definitely, I'm feeling the hair. I would definitely give some hair for this uh, tree language thing, ritual thing that I'm doing. This whole time, there would have been something wrong happening in your body. As you go through the ritual, it's getting worse. What? It's your skin. It itches like something's trying to escape. It's your back, straighter than ever. You feel like it's overgrowing with bark. Oh no, am I turning into a tree? Is that what's happening? Okay, um, it's your hair. It tangled and you can't get the red beads out of it. It's your head. It's easier to look up now. It's your eyes. You feel like you have more of them. It's your chest. You feel like something warm is growing in you. Um, I think my eyes are jacked up. All right, good job, guys. Level two hype train. Looks like you got a little doggy. A little doggy emote. Good job. All right, the whole time there had been something wrong with the forest. As you go through the ritual, you're finally able to verbalize what it is. A memory of a future that won't happen is haunting this place. Every tree turning into thousands of possibilities it won't reach. It's so loud. It's so loud. Every tree is speaking its own language, excited for you, even if you can't, can understand only one of them. You're surrounded by ghosts. They don't do much, simply allow you to pass through the terrain. The fairies are keeping just out of your sight but you can still catch a glimpse of them here and there as they attempt to make your ritual harder. The air smells like honey, even if it has no right to do so. It makes you feel at home. Every single dweller of the forest is staring at you, expecting what's unexpected. Um, I think that the fairies speaks to me the most. The past and the future are connected to this very point. You know that whatever you do next will finish the ritual and seal your fate forever. It's time to look and see. It's time to destroy yourself. Oh, shit. <laughs> It's time to be one with the forest. It's time to see the light. It's time to grow. It's time to stop. We're going to be one with the forest, guys. All right. Any last words? No, I never do these. Okay. What is it? I did get linden. Okay. Okay. And the tree that spoke to you was a linden, ageless and fragrant. She took you in her arms and sung a quiet lullaby. My child, she said, there will be time. There will be time you'll be in need. There will be time you won't reach to others and feel like you failed the world. But always remember, you're not alone in this. There will be a person here to help you. There will be a person to hold you tight, and you'll find them, and you'll find them. And with that, you knew that even if you feel alone now, you won't be alone forever. Oh, this one was nice. Oh, you got Oak Koneko? Okay, let's read it. He told me that I need to grow and mature at my own pace, since I'm still weak and vulnerable like a young tree, but I have a bright future ahead. Oh, I love that. It looks like the other answers are pine, birch, ash, and you. So if y'all want to take this quiz, I'll link it again. So you can take it and tell me what you got. Oh, you want iridescent ears? Okay. Hang on, Lunar. I'll get them. I'll get them. I lied, Lunar. I won't get them. Um, I guess the cat took them and is playing with them somewhere. I don't have my iridescent ones. I'll have to find them. Um, oh, wait. They're on the floor. I see them. Yeah. I got it. Okay, I found them. Oof, okay, here we go. We'll switch to iridescent. Yes, iridescent. <laughs> there we go, there we go, iridescent ones. Okay, guys, so y'all know I have the, um, the Xbox uh, cloud gaming thing. That's what we used for Boyfriend Dungeon. That's what we're gonna use for Mist right here. So let's see. You were inactive for too long. No. Okay, I guess we'll quit and restart it. I tried to already have it started for you guys. Rude. Okay, here we go. Come on, load the game. Yes, Moisty. Oh my god. You know, Team Game Pass. Yeah. Love Game Pass. And I love that they added this. Like, this is so great, because then I can play, like, in my element. I don't have to, like, borrow the husband's, um... Uh, Xbox or or anything like that. I had an Xbox once upon a time. Um, it was his old one and it stopped working. So this is great. This is perfect. It's beautiful. Excuse me. That was the seltzer talking. Here we go. Cyan, still an indie studio all these years later. And they like it that way, as I understand it. Microsoft notices, please. <laughs> Microsoft sponsor Moisty, he deserves it. Okay, we're going to do a new game so you guys can see the, the beginning. Uh, Autosave, that's fine, I don't care.
Um, we're gonna do classic so that you guys can see the original experience also because I know the answers to all the puzzles. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's watch this little cinematic here. I realized the moment I fell into the fissure that the book would not be destroyed as I had planned. It continued falling into that starry expanse of which I had opened. Mm. I've tried to speculate where it might have landed. But I must admit that such conjecture is futile. Still, questions about whose hands might one day hold my misbook are unsettling to me. I know my apprehensions might never be allayed, and so I close, realizing that perhaps the ending has not yet been written. Atris always losing his missed book. What's up with that? What's up with that? Okay. Here we go. Let's open it. Moisty, you're so hyped because this is mist, and mist is like the fucking best. Um, how does it sound? I feel like it, I might be quiet compared to it. I'm gonna turn the game down a little bit, which is what I tried to do while he was talking, but I didn't realize it would pause it. Here we go. Oh, that sound. Whoa. <laughs> you know, before I settled on having EverQuest sounds for my alerts for my stream, I almost had some mist sounds. Not gonna lie. That is like how near and dear this game is to me. Um, I'll talk about it more kind of as we play, but this game is a really special place in my heart. Okay. Oh, once tried to play Miss Myself, it got disoriented. Yes, um, and so, okay. So here's where we are, right here. So there's a sunken ship. We've got a sunken ship right there, and we've got this little area, which we can go and press the button. And it'll open up. But we're not going to go down there quite yet. I had Taylor Swift sounds and songs that scared the heck out of me every single time. I remember, Lunar, you don't stream often enough, but that's true. That's true, you do have that. Okay, so the first thing we come to here after that is a switch. And this is one of the things that Mist has taught me, because everything that I know, I learned from this game. Like, no lie, for real. And one of those things is, if there is a switch, you have to flip it. Also, same thing goes for buttons, dials, like, you should press everything. Because how else are you going to know what it's going to do, or what might happen? So, you can't know unless you push the buttons. Alright, a note from Catherine. Oh no, it's a note from Atris. It's to Catherine. Catherine, I've left for you a message of utmost importance in our four chamber beside the dock. It's the chamber we just saw. Enter the number of marker switches on this island into the imager to retrieve the message. Atris. Yours, Atris. Now, in the original game, this was on the grass right over here, and in most of the remakes it's on the grass. They moved it up to this rock because there's a VR version of this game. And no lie, when I first played this remake, I was like, why did they remove the cute little note from Atris that gives you the big clue? Why isn't it in the game? Like, I thought it was just gone because I went straight here and I was like, oh, where's the note? Well, it's over here on this rock. Y'all, I know it sounds crazy, but my memory of Mist, this is what it looks like in my memory. The way that it looks in this version. Even though the original Mist came out in like 1993 slash 1994. It's 1994 on the PC when I played it. And, oh god. It just, it blew my little mind. And so it, to me it looked like this, but it didn't. If you go back and look, that game... It doesn't look good. <laughs> it doesn't look good. Um, but to me, it looks like this. So I'm, I'm, I was so excited when they dropped this remake because to me, it was like, oh, I immediately knew I could share it with you guys because I've been wanting to play Mist on stream for so long, like so freaking long. But all of the versions just don't really look good enough quality, I think, for streaming like it would be hard it would be hard they just don't they don't look good they look old and so when this one dropped and i saw it and i just i could I, the way it made me feel it was just like oh this is the version i can finally stream it for everybody so what we're doing now is we're going and counting these markers right so we found one two three so far so this is number four number four right here this is number five. 
So it's number six, right over here. There's, is there one over here by the tree? No. There's another marker over there. Turn and show you guys. Over there, across the water. We can't reach that quite yet. So a couple things about this game that you need to know. It's not possible to die in this game. This isn't like something where you fight monsters or anything like that. Um, you can't die. You just, you can't. Also, it's pu there's puzzles, but you can't screw up the puzzles, right? Like, you can't mess them up. Here's a grave with some writing on it and some blue flowers. So that's interesting. Little blue flowers. Um, so you can't, you can't mess up the puzzles to where you can't play the game. So what was that? Docks, by the gear, by the observatory... So that was three, and then four by the ship there, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yes. All right, so our note from um, Atris to Catherine said to go put the number of marker switches into this room down here. So that's what we're going to do. Um, you, also, you just can't lose this game, basically. If so if you ever feel like you're totally 100% stuck, that you've screwed it up somehow, you cannot. So that's another thing that I think is really wonderful and magical about this game. There are no fail states, and yet it is incredibly beautiful and challenging. And I absolutely just love it. So I played this game when it first came out on the PC. I was like 10 years old or something like that. Ooh, viewfinder. Listen to this music. Anyway, I played it with my dad, and it was just like this wonderfully magical experience. Okay, settings dimensional imager. 40 is a topographical extrusion test. All right, so what does 40 do? Let's do that. Oops. The only thing is this Xbox version is very easy to hit the wrong buttons. <laughs> uh, there we go. I gotta use the D-pad, and then it works. All right, let's see what that is. Oh, it stopped waving at me. Ooh. This looks kind of like the island that we're on, doesn't it? With the mountain on the side. It's kind of neat. What else can we do with this thing? All right, so marker switch diagram is 47. So if you can't find all the marker switches, I bet this would help you out, right? So this is the marker switch. So then you know for sure this is what you're looking for. You're looking for eight of these. And that's another beautiful thing about this game. Everything that it challenges you on, you can figure it out just by simple observation. I think the other one's 67, is that right? Yeah, 67. Let's do the water turbulence. Ooh, back to the wavy, the wavy water. You can solve anything by simply observing it and trying to figure it out. Um, and just trying different things and pushing different buttons. You want a, a goat bath? Okay, Moisty, I will add that for you. After the stream, after the stream, I'll get that added, so it will be here next time. Just for you, we have Lunar's Wolf Howl, and we'll have Moisty's Goat Bah! Okay, so here we go. Let's see the message from Atris. What does he have to tell Catherine? Catherine, my love, I have to leave quickly. Something terrible has happened. It's hard for me to believe. Most of my books have been destroyed. Catherine, it's one of our sons. I suspect I can off. But I shouldn't leap to conclusions. I'll find him and Cirrus as well. I should have known not to have left my library unchecked for so long. I've removed the remaining undamaged books from the library and placed them in the places of protection. You shouldn't have to use the books until I return, but if you've forgotten the access key, remember the tower rotation, and don't worry, Catherine. 
Everything will be fine. I'll see you shortly. Uh, oh, and erase this message after you viewed it just to be safe. Well, Atris, I have some bad news for you. I'm not Catherine, and I don't know how to erase messages from this. Um, I'm very sorry. My name is Karen. I know it's close, but I am not Catherine, so maybe Catherine will come and be here soon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't worry, Moisty. I'll show everything. I'll show you everything in this game. Well, everything that's important anyway. Alright, so he said to go into the library. So let's go in there. Let's go in the library and look at those books and see if we can figure out what he means by tower rotations. That's what we got to do next. So let's come on up here. So this big building that I didn't walk into yet, this is the library right here. There's a lot of fun things in here, like burned books. So we've got a bunch of burned books, but we've got this one, one, two, three, four, five books that are not burned. Okay, we'll read those later. I'll show you guys those later. We've also got this, this poster right here with a lever underneath it. So let's see what that does. Oh, nothing. Let's see what the other one does. Let's see. Oh. In the original game, you just press the, the painting itself and it kind of swirled around. So like things were kind of magical in Mist, like kind of magical, kind of steampunk. I feel like in this remake, they really leaned into the steampunk. Okay, so that closes off the main door and opens up this back door here. And you can see this painting is of the outside. So here we go. We can do this and open back up the outside. And then the bookshelf goes back. Okay. There's also some very mysterious red and blue books here. Let's see what's up with that. Oh, they're static. <gasps> the blue page goes inside the blue book. No, this is Karen. Okay, so he wants blue pages, um, and that's Akinar, I guess. So Sirius was talking, or sorry, Atrus was talking about his son, Sirius and Akinar. So let's see about this one. The red page goes in the red book. And Karen. Okay, so that's the other brother. Oh, okay. Okay, so both Sirius and Akinar need some help. They need us to rescue them. But there's some issue going on between them and their dad, Atris. So that's curious. Yeah, Jane, you would really love this game. Um, I think you're going to really enjoy it. It's absolutely up your alley. Okay, so then there's there's this poster. Remember, the tower rotation. Well, this looks like a knob right here. I bet we can rotate it. Let's see what's going on. Okay, left button and right button will rotate. Ooh. 
Oh, it stops there. Ooh, where else does it stop? Oh, it stops there. Oh, it stops there, and it stops there. Wow, okay. So we are gonna do go to this one first because there's a method to my madness of the order we're gonna do these in. But you can go ahead and do all four rotations right now if you want to. So we rotate at the tower. Now let's go in here because this looks like it's more towards the tower that we saw that was um, behind the library. So let's go in here and see what's up. Ooh, what's this? Oh, an elevator! It goes up! We can see, we can walk around this room. We can go into the elevator. Okay, let's walk in. Now, this existed in the original Mist and still exists in this version. You can't just press the button. You have to close the door first, which is something that I definitely remember getting stuck on, me and my dad as a kid, but you have to close the door. Then you can push the button and go up the tower. <laughs> okay. Now we're in the tower, and we've got different music up here. All right, so the keys are up here. That's what Atris was trying to tell Catherine. So let's go look up here. There's a book. So this is maybe a book that's for the sunken ship. All right. So something about that sunken ship is what we're looking at for right here. And then let's look at what else is in here. So we've also got this key right here. So this is the next thing that you must know from Mist. Take notes. Note taking is actually very important in life. So I've got my paper right here and we're gonna take some notes. We're gonna write this down. So this is for, y'all don't know this yet, but spoilers. This is for Stone Ship. Oh no, I grabbed a pen that doesn't write. Can I make it right? Let me see if one of the other pens works. I might have to go get a different pen. <laughs> this is the game for me if I gotta take notes. Yeah, Jane, can you imagine? This game came out in like 1993, 94. There we go, this one writes. Stone ship. And there is nothing like it. And there still is barely anything like this type, this game. Like it is true, a truly unique experience. And the whole point of the game is to observe, to push buttons, and to take notes. I mean, can you imagine three more compelling activities such as these? I can't, and I'm not being sarcastic. I know it might sound like it, but I actually like really love this shit. Okay, so that's October 11th, 1984 at 10.04 a.m. And then we've got January. 17th, 12.07 at 5.46 a.m. Okay, then we've got November. Don't die on me, Pen. Don't stop writing. I need you. Oh my god. Pen sucks. Should have grabbed a different one. Different pack of pens. Okay, November 23rd, 97.91 at 6.57 p.m. I remember my mom and I tried to play this once. Oh, oh, you tried to play Riven? <gasps> the bowl full of, oh my god, the fireball puzzle. That puzzle's too hard. That puzzle's too hard. It should be illegal. Okay, that puzzle is the bane of my existence in Riven. Okay, this game is actually accessible and not that hard. It just takes time and effort. Riven, too hard. Ridiculous. Um, Thematically, it's the best of the Mist games. The puzzles are too hard, though. I am too stupid for Riven. That's just that's just the facts. Yep. Um, found a weight puzzle missing some weights. Notes of each weight were present. Yep, yep, yep. I know exactly what you're talking about. I remember nothing about that game except those notes. <laughs> I believe you, Koneko. 
Yeah, I don't know. If they ever remake Riven someday, maybe I'll play that, but I will definitely have to use a guide. Um, I do not have fond memories of it the way I have of this game. It was just simply too hard for me. Um, I'm I'm just a dumb, a dumb dummy at heart. You know, I only know how to research. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and Riven is like a game for really smart people. I'm only averagely smart. I'm not that smart. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm a B student smart, right? So Mist, absolutely perfect. Makes me feel like a freaking genius. All right, guys. Now what we're going to do is we're going to read this stone ship book right here. I want to show this to you guys. All right. Emmett was the first to live on the rocks. He named them the rocks because that is what they were. A group of sharp rocks clustered together in the middle of a large sea. This is where Emmett lived. He enjoyed his life. Emmett would occasionally swim to nearby rocks as it was never too far of a distance. One day, another person appeared on the rocks for no apparent reason to Emmett. Emmett named this new person Branch. Emmett and Branch quickly became friends, swimming and hunting for fish together often. Emmett showed Branch the simple cave in which he lived on the largest rock. Soon, Branch discovered a place where he decided to live, also on the same large rock. The sun always shone brightly in their world, and the water was always dazzlingly clear, allowing them to see almost to the deep ocean floor which surrounded them. Though the sun always shone, it was never too hot for the boys. A light breeze came from the north and cooled the area down. One day, while Branch was swimming and having fun in the water, he noticed another boy swimming. Branch brought the new boy to Emmett to find out what to call the new boy. Emmett said the boy should be called Will. Will was soon part of the group, and the three of the boys swam and enjoyed their perfect world. At least that is the story I was told when I arrived on the island. Emmett, Branch, and Will were surprised to see me at first, but even before the night ended, we were all becoming good friends. Today, the second day on this newly created age, a strange thing happened. It was not strange to me, but the three boys did not understand what was happening. While I was relaxing under a large tree on one of the smaller rock islands, it began to rain. It was a nice rain that lasted for about an hour in the morning. I explained to the boys that the rain was not harmful, yet they obviously still feared it. Before going to sleep tonight, I told the boys I would leave the following day. I told them that while I was gone, I would make a surprising change in their world. They didn't understand, not that I expected them to. I still do not fully understand what happened today. It was an, I was, oh, I was experimenting with the art testing the limits of the rules as dictated to me by father. I attempted to create a boat by riding it into the world. I thought everything was planned correctly, yet somehow the boat had become gripped by the rock and broke in half. Although this test did not turn out as I had hoped, I now have answers to a few questions my father never answered. As for the boat, I can see the boys enjoy it anyway, and with that I am pleased. They have played on it all day. Even though the boat cannot move, I have enjoyed studying from it. It is much sturdier platform than the jagged rocks. In the course of my observations, I have learned some very interesting things regarding the solar system of this age. The nights are absolutely beautiful here. I have made note of and named a number of constellations that pass above me. Also during the night, I catch glimmers of light from the horizon, which I have not been able to discover if it is created by some natural phenomenon or by additional people on far-off islands or rocks. I should very much like to discover which. I rather suspect it is additional people, which would explain the appearance of Branch and Will. The rain today was slightly heavier than usual, and just when the boys were getting used to the light rains, a small storm arrived. They were frightened of the heavier rain, not to mention the thunder and lightning. If rain has never fallen here until recently, as the boys tell me, I would like to discover why it is falling now. Regardless, I have decided to return home for a short while. I've also been thinking of some plans for a lighthouse that I hope to construct soon. I think that perhaps by shining a bright light towards the horizon, it might prove my suspicions regarding the additional inhabitants. They would be curious about the light and travel to discover its source, if they have the means. I return with many tools that I will need for construction of the lighthouse. I have decided that once the lighthouse is complete, I will leave for some time and let the world's own imagination have control. We have worked three weeks on the lighthouse now and are making great progress. The rock that we are building on seems to not be as secure as I would like. 
I've had to alter my plans slightly, but those alterations pose no real problem. The boys are quite strong and have been helping me immensely. I estimate construction will be done within two days. The lighthouse is finished and we all are, we are all proud of our creation. The boys are amazed at the structure wrought from rock with their own hands. That evening we powered up the generator, much to the boys' dread at first, and shined a great light to the horizon for many hours. I stayed the night in the top of the lighthouse, and in the morning I awoke to observe a sunrise without my being coated with the chilly blanket of ocean dew I had become accustomed to. It was Will who first saw the girl. She was swimming not far off from the boat, where Will was getting ready to hunt for fish. Then Will noticed a man not far away from the girl. Emmett was very pleased to meet the additional neighbors. I feel pleased to leave this age. I have set in motion events that have nothing to do with writing the art. That will have a more profound impact on this world than I could have ever written. I think, oh, and we've got a bird's eye view of the stone ship age. So we've got the ship there that's inside the rock. We've got a path that goes up to the top. Um, we've got some other structures over here, a structure here, and this right here is the lighthouse. Oh, let me go back for the sentence. Okay. I think of it as, I think of it this age as a gift to myself. I will wrap up and open someday in the future only to discover that it has changed so much that indeed it is a surprise. Besides, I have yet another new age that awaits me. It seems I'm going to need some way to travel underwater in this new age, and so much planning is in order. It has been ten years since I left this age, which I have since called the Stone Ship Age. Upon returning, I cannot believe the changes that have taken place. The original three boys have grown into adults, and there are many new faces that I do not recognize. Branch told me that it has not rained for seven years, and the cool breezes are back again. They are all very content and have been serving me with new foods and showing me new materials that they have discovered. It even seems they found gold somewhere. I see it in many forms around the island. My lighthouse has been kept in perfect condition, and it looks as if they've tried their way, or tried their very best, to keep it so. Yet I have noted that the entire rock it was built on has sunk approximately 40 or 50 centimeters. After a wonderful visit with my old friends, I wonder aloud with them what things will be like here in another 10 years. And then we've got some constellations that, uh, that Atris was talking about here. And that's it. That's the stone ship age. Okay. Let's go. So he talked about a lighthouse, a generator. He talked about the rock sinking and the ship itself. So what we've got over here, let's push this to open it. This feels like a Nancy Drew game on speed. This is probably uh, part of what inspired some of the things in the Nancy Drew games, um, Kendra. Oop. Open door. There we go. Okay. Then we have to close it so that it gets nice and dark in here. And oh, there's stars. Okay, let's get in this weird dentist chair. <laughs> All right, and remember, those clues were dates. So let's um, let's punch those in. So let's. Oh, the only thing about the Xbox, it's easy for me to push the wrong buttons. There we go. Okay, so our first date was October eleventh, nineteen eighty four. All right. So. Oh, I think I have to use the up. Yeah. Okay. So we faster go this way. October. And then we go back to our crane. And move that down. And then we gotta go to 11. Okay, so I use the up and down again. October 11th. And this will be the year. Oh. Nope. Oh, the next one. There we go. 1984. No, this way. Okay, and then it was 10.04 a.m. Okay, 10.04. All right, let's push the button and see what we get. All right, 
So we have a constellation here. So again, remember, have to take notes. So we're going to write this down. Alright, so this constellation looks like there's a big star here, and one here, a little one down here, like this, and then two little ones. Okay, so what do you guys think? That kind of looks like the constellation, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let me take a sip of this nasty drink, and we'll put it in the next one. <sighs> you can put in any date you want here and just play around with this. And I remember when we played this game at first, before we really fully knew what we were doing, me and my dad put in all kinds of crazy dates and just spent forever kind of just playing with this, looking at it, messing with the stars. Um, it's fascinating. And my understanding also is that if you play randomized um, instead of classic version, then the puzzles will be slightly different. So you'll have different uh, dates and times that come up in different constellations that you're meant to to get to solve the puzzles. So that's kind of a benefit of playing randomized. If you've played this game so much that you literally like know all the puzzles, like you have the dates memorized and things like that, you can play randomized and it will give you all new possible answers. Which I, I love that. I love the idea of the, the randomized. Okay, so this next one that's 546 it's a.m. 5 and then 46. Okay, let's see what this brings us. Oh, my mom eventually got a guide to get through the game. Yeah. Um, Riven, if I if I played Riven for you guys, I would absolutely have to play with a guide. I, I don't remember very much of it, but I remember it being incredibly hard, and it's known for being, like, ridiculously hard. So I would absolutely have to play with a guy. Like, there's no way. All right. That looks kind of like it. Right? So there's, there's that constellation right there. Okay, one more. November 23rd. Oh, didn't mean to get off of that. Okay, so we've got November 23rd. 9791. Oh, too many times. There we go. Mm. Oh, getting too excited. Getting too excited over the mist. Um, the third mist game, however, that one is more my speed. Now, thematically, it's not as good as the first two mists, and it was made by a totally different studio. So, like, the story's not really there compared to Mist and Riven. Um, that being said, the puzzles are not, like, kill you hard the way Riven is. So I actually really thoroughly enjoyed the third Mist game, even though a lot of Mist fans um, don't as much. <laughs> the technology on the architecture is pretty compelling. Oh, yeah, Atris had a bunch of really cool stuff on his island. <laughs> Uh, let's see, so this is 6.57 p.m., so we have to use military time. So that would be... So that would be 7... 18, I think? So that would be 18.57. Is, I believe, how we would do that. Yeah, Atrus, um... Atrus was a smart cookie. He, had, he did all kinds of stuff. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for confirming. Okay, so here's our third constellation. Let's draw that guy. All right, so we've got a lot of stars in this one. And that guy right there. Okay, so here's our third constellation right there. Okay, so remember there were constellations in the back of the book we just read? So let's go figure that out. All right, one last look up at the beautiful ceiling. Look at that, it's amazing. I don't know, Jane. I mean, it definitely seems up your alley. You should absolutely play this. Um, so I'll tell you all one other thing. We're going to basically play half of this game today and half next week. And the reason why is I have pretty severe simulation sickness, and I actually can't play a huge amount of first-person games. Um, I didn't used to have this problem. This is something that developed in my adulthood. Um, I used to, you know, absolutely love roller coasters and first-person video games and all of that stuff, but 
in my adulthood, uh, I cannot anymore, unfortunately. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if the stream will last a full two hours as it normally does, but, um, yep. So we're going to play about halfway through and the end of this stream is going to be the absolutely worst part for my uh, simulation sickness. So then we can be done and then I'll play the rest um, next week. So, excuse me, those uh, those three constellations were leaf and spider and snake. So you can see in my notes. So it was the leaf and the spider and the snake. So again, this game is all about just using your power of observation. And look. There's all these dials, right? And remember the other thing is, if you see a button, you have to push it. If you see a lever, you have to flip it. If you see a dial, you have to turn it. So the bird and the cross, those were some of the symbols that we saw, weren't they? Oh, there's one of the constellations, a leaf. That's one of the three constellations that was the key. What's this, an arrow? Okay, that was not one of them. Yeah, this was great fun. Me and my dad played this together when we were when I was a kid, and um, I have incredibly fond memories of it. There was definitely nights where we went to bed angry because we couldn't figure out a certain puzzle. <laughs> um, because I was 10! <laughs> and, uh, and he's okay at puzzles, but not particularly good at it, you know what I mean? But what he is good at is not giving up. Oh, look at that. The boat rose. I wonder if the big boat rose. Let's go look. Wow. Oh, the big boat rose out of the ocean. Let's go. Let's go to it. Let's see what's on this big old boat. Wow, it's all wet. Slippery. We better not slip. So yeah, some things I did to make this first person game playable now as an adult, you know, trying to play a first person game is I changed the cursor to the hand so it was bigger, so I had something bigger to focus on. And the other thing that I did was I turned, um, I'll show you guys the setting. I turned um, this look intensity all the way down. So, I, so that I don't accidentally like make myself move across the screen super quickly. So that's how I made it work. Okay. Oh, this kind of looks like the mist book that got us here, right? So I bet if we touch this, then we can go to a new land. Let's see if we can go to the stone ship age. If you seen the new game Super Liminal on Game Pass, I feel like you would like it. If it's first person, I probably cannot play it. Um, but if it is, you know, if it has some, you know, maybe an FOV slider, or I can make the icon really large, I can maybe get through it. Um, I'll check it out and see. Oh, that sound. Oh, that sound. <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, certain games are like that, right? Like, you just, the sounds, like, just take you back in a way, like, Mm. I just love it. I love the sound. Okay, here we go. Stone ship age. This looks just like the drawing that we saw. Okay, so there's water down there. Can we go swimming? We cannot go swimming, you guys. We cannot swim in this game. Okay, there's water down here, too. Um, Novion played a Lovecraft slash ocean theme similar game recently. I have to look it up what it's called because it's pretty neat. Oh yeah, yeah, tell me. Um, when Mist first came out, they said that like this was a revolution for games and everybody gonna, was gonna make games like this and literally nobody did. Nobody did for years. Um, there's not a lot of games like this. Okay, so there's this key that we can pick up, but it doesn't seem to reach this lock over here. So that's interesting. And this is all filled up with water too. Okay. What else can we discover in this land? Oh, 
Okay, so here's the ship itself that Atris tried to give them with his writing, but that didn't really work out. And more water down there. Alright, let's walk up this area. The music in this game. Y'all, I could just listen to the Mist soundtrack. Also, Mist 3 Exile, the soundtrack for that game is amazing. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's a telescope. Can we... Oh, oh, we can... Oh, we can look. Let's see. Wow. Oh, there's the lighthouse. Okay. So the lighthouse is important. Atris built that for these boys, right? So that's at degree 135. We're going to write that down, too. Graphics on these kind of games have become so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, when I was um, a kid playing the original version of this, so for y'all that, that don't know, um, there wasn't very many games that were like fully 3D rendered worlds like this that you could go in. So well, the way that Mist did it was that um, you had like a series of pictures and you would click on the picture to move forward and you would click on the right or left side of the picture to turn yourself around and there was just like hundreds and hundreds of these like photos that basically you, you clicked through. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Let's look at this. I just... I want to be I want to be off the back of the boat for a moment look at that Sun look at how big the Sun is here and look at that water the water did not look like that in the original or really any of the renditions of this game all right let's go let's go to this little funny umbrella thing next oh lunar I'm so glad I'm sharing this with you then I feel like this game is kind of like lost to the ages, but real Mist fans know. Okay, so we've got this fun little lever here, and let's see what it does. Okay, let's see what that side does. You hear that? Something's happening. Something's happening, okay. I feel like I'm very bright. Rebalance the colors. There we go. All right. Oh, my face is getting really washed out. Hang on. Y'all cannot see me. Let me fix that real quick. Let me fix that. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry. Video settings for a second. I'm just going to turn the brightness down. I don't know why it's so... The white balancing and stuff is just so crazy right now. There we go. Less exposure. Okay, you can auto white balance again. Let's turn the saturation back up. Brightness can go back up a little. There we go. Okay, now y'all can see me. Sorry, I didn't realize I was looking so washed out. All right. There's nothing more satisfying than feeling like you made progress in a puzzle game like this. Yeah. <laughs> but Moisty, you beat it in like five hours and something. I think that's really dang good. Um, it shows that you actually are smart, because it definitely took me way more than five hours as a kid to beat this. And I was playing with my dad, who was is like a full adult, so, you know. Okay, so we pushed it to the, the left side. That didn't do anything here, but we did hear it do something. What did that do? What did that do? Let's see. Oh, now there's no water down there. That's interesting. Let's go down there. Oh, there's a switch. Okay. We're actually going to save this switch for a little bit later. Let's try another one of the water settings. Thank you, Lunar. Yeah, I just straight up didn't even look. I didn't even realize it. I don't think I was that washed out at the beginning of the stream, but maybe I was just not freaking paying attention. It's possible. Who knows? <laughs> All right, so grab this and let's move it. Let's go to the left instead and see what happens there. Ooh, we hear the noise again. Okay, so the right was the ship and the ship is full of water again. Is this what we emptied with the other side? No, it is not. Okay. see if this is what we emptied. 
Aha, now this is empty. Okay, let's go down. This is where like my simulation sickness gets really tripped up. So I'm gonna actually watch the chat <laughs> instead of looking at my screen. <laughs> okay, there we go, we made it down. All right, what's this? Oh, there's a chest up there. Oh, I wanna open it. I wanna open it, okay. We can press this. <gasps> Ooh, the water goes down the hole. Water go down the hole. Okay, let's close this back up. Here we go. We emptied that out. Okay, let's go back up the twisty. Not look at the screen while I do it. <laughs> I wish there was a photo mode of this with some really well composed scenes. Yes, oh my god, that would be amazing. All right, so we did that. Now let's try messing with the water again. Yeah, it would be super, super cool, Moisty. I totally agree. All right, so we haven't seen where the middle one goes, so let's do that. All right, so what does the middle one drain? Each setting clearly drains something, so this must drain the inside here. Yes, it does. Okay. So then our lighthouse is going to be filled back up. Oh, and there's the chest! Because there was air in the, um, in the keg thing. So now we can take this key and we can put it in this chest. It does reach that one. Oh, and there's another key. Okay, so then this key can go in this hole. See, observation and note-taking. That is how you win. That's how you win life. That's how you win this game. Ooh, okay, we go up. What's this? Oh, it's the lighthouse. Let's see the view from here. Okay, so it looks like they kind of lived inside there where it was all flooded out. There's the the telescope there that we used a second ago. This poor ship. It just tried hard to give them a ship, but it just didn't work out. All right, let's go in here. What's this? Remember that generator Atris mentioned? Let's see about this. Okay, oh, turn, ah, dang it. <laughs> the controls are kind of hard. Okay, we got it all the way up. So let's go back down. See the babies? You want to see the babies, Kendra? Okay, give me one second. As soon as we um, as soon as we do do the thing I just did for the generator, I will turn on the baby cam. Are the babies behind me? Yes, Lady is on the bed. So the camera's all set up. Ooh. You can hear the generator noises in here. That's amazing. Let's go down. Let's go down. Ooh, okay. We go down far. What's this? Okay, there's this room off to the side. So remember, we went and looked at where the lighthouse was. That was an important marker here. And now we have this whole little spinning thing. What is this? Okay, remember the degree was 135. So I think that is this button? The southeast button? Nope. Oh, I pushed the wrong one. I thought it was that one. I think it was this one actually. I think I pushed one to the side. Okay, well it wants me to get out of here now. I guess I'll go. We have to do that again. <laughs> oh, you're on the treadmill right now, Jane? This game is quite calming for a treadmill ride. I don't know about that. All right, let me out, let me out. All right, we gotta walk back through the darkness. Uh, let me turn on the baby cam. Baby cam, baby cam. There you go, there's Lady grooming herself in the baby cam. All right, we gotta do the turn the generator again because I pushed the wrong stupid button. You're supposed to push the 35, 135 degree button because that's where the lighthouse is. But um, I must have pushed the wrong one. I think I just pushed one to the side. 
of where it was supposed to be. Because that's the only other big rotating thing on this island. But again, like, remember, what I said in the beginning of this is you cannot mess these puzzles up. You cannot get yourself stuck, truly stuck, to where you can't, um, you can't win. Like, that's not possible. Okay, let's do this again. Go, generator, go! Go, generator, go! Oh, I let go. All the way up. All the way up. There we go. I'm in full podcast mode, nearly 1 a.m. here. <laughs> I promised I'd see 9 or at least hear some mist. Well, Moisty, it's okay if you fall asleep. Um, the mist noises are definitely very sleepable, I think. Especially the portions with music. I love everything about the sound design of this game. And the updates to the sound with each version that they've released have just gotten better and better, you know? Um... I really love it. I, I could just like put on the soundtrack for this game and just like zone out like crazy. All right, here we go. Let's try that again. Push the right button this time. All right. I think it's this one. Yeah, because I think that's north. Yeah, it should be the one that this orange one is pointing to, is 135, I believe. Aha! Success! Okay, now that we've got all the lights on, I just want to take a second to, like, show you guys, like, look! Look at all, like, the fish and stuff, we're underwater! It's almost 1.40 a.m. here. <laughs> Alright, thank you, Koneko! I appreciate, of course, any time that you're here. All right, so there's that. Okay, so we got all the lights working. So let's see what we can do next. Let's continue down this hallway. Oh, we've got another switch. What's in here? Ooh. Bedroom. Oh, crazy music. Oh, what's this? Red page. Remember, we are looking for red and blue pages. So let's grab that. We definitely want that. What's this weird thing? Can I poke it? I thought I could poke the green button, but maybe not. Pretty sure I can. Yeah, I can. Ooh, what's that? More weird, crazy magic tech. A dagger and some vials. Probably a poison. Ooh, and some medical stuff. Pills and things. Creepy. Do you think because this room is red that maybe it's, um, Akinar's room? Or no, Cirrus's room. Cirrus is the red book. Some jewelry. Coins. Oh, and some really fine, like, pottery and stuff. Okay. We can spin the globe. Spin, spin, spin. The land masses on this globe are definitely different than the Earth. What's this one? I can spin it too. I don't know what this globe is for, though. Some red planet. And very nice bed, but we cannot lay on the bed. Let's go. We're out of here, Holmes. Audi 5000. Alright, so we got a red page, so we gotta find a blue page. Because remember, the brothers need help to get out of the books. Love lady. <laughs> what is she doing? Oh, she's bathing herself. Yeah. She's very cute. We love lady. Alright, let's go down this way. Okay, we've got another lever. Let's do that one. Whoa! Okay, I thought the other room before was kind of like evil layer looking, but wow, look at this. What is this lamp? Holy crap! What's this? Oh, 
Oh, a skull. Oh yeah, Eliza would love this room. Ooh, a skull or a rose. Okay. Got some vials there that looks like some ink. Some protractors and things. Some other drawers. Alright, nothing in those. What about this side? Oh! A blue page. I thought this blue page was like gone missing when I first played this remake because in the original game the blue page is just chilling on this bed here. Also, where where is his sheets? Where is Blue Boy's sheets? Don't know. Mystery. Okay. So we got the blue page and the red page. The next thing we have to figure out is how in the heck and heck do we get back to Mist Island to give Cirrus and Akinar their blue and red pages? Well, let's go back out. And if we remember, we can also drain part of the ship. So let's go try that. And you can see the power all works now. See, like, all the lights are going, the lighthouse is going, so that's great. Alright, let's go to this side like I did originally. And there we go. More draining noises. And let's see what's down here. We're gonna do that switch that we did just a moment, just a little bit ago. We came down here, but I didn't didn't click it. We're gonna click it now. Time to click the switch. Yeah, go. Whoa, what's this? More underwater fishy things and green lights. Y'all, Atris had like the best technology. Who that? Razapoop, welcome Razapoop. Thank you so much for joining us. We're in the stone ship age right now. This is the first age that we've done in this playthrough. Okay. I love his checkerboard floor. I think that's beautiful. I love how this is underwater. I love this age so much. But it's almost time to leave. We got our red and blue pages. Okay, let's do it. Let's push this button. There we go. Come on, push the button. I've been wanting to buy this game because it's VR version sounds really interesting. Yes! Apparently the VR version is amazing. Here we go. Okay, what? Oh, look at that. That's the library. It's the ceiling of the library. Okay, we can go back. Let's go back. Y'all ready for the- are y'all ready for the noise again? I'm ready to hear the noise again. Here we go. Chills every time. Welcome, Reaper, Doom Reaper, Dommy Reaper, how, however you say your name. Tell me how I'm supposed to say your name so I can say it right. Um, just finished for the first time last week in VR, had a great time. Oh, that's amazing. I have played this game many, many times. <laughs> um, so this is my second playthrough on the new version. I played it played it when it first uh, when it first released, this 2021 version. Okay, so there's a new blue page. Let's see what, um, I think this one was Akinar. Let's see what Akinar has to say. A dome reaper. Oh, okay, the caps are cosmetic. Understood. Okay. Whoa, blue page goes in. Let's see. What's he got to tell us? Okay, Akinar. Yes, I'm very happy I can carry more than one page. <laughs> what about your brother? Maybe complete? Don't. Always will be his. Oh. Listen to him. Listen to my brother. Oh, don't listen to your brother. Egotistical fool and a liar. Help me. Bring me the blue pages. Ignore the red ones. Don't bring the red ones. Honestly, <laughs> implore. You must believe me. You have my retribution. Please bring me the blue pages. 
Oh boy. Pages. Peace. Got some sibling rivalry going on here, guys. Um, apparently, Akinar doesn't want us to free his brother, Cirrus. Um, let's see what Cirrus has to say from his first page. Yes, I have. Thank you for bringing me the red page. You must continue to help. Okay. My name is Cyrus. Release me. I beg you to find me. Me. You must release me. Release me from this corner, which has become Bring me the red page. I need more red pages, please. Bang. Wow. Don't waste time. Look. Okay, guys, we got some sibling rivalry going on here. So he's saying he's wrongfully imprisoned. Bring the red page to me. So what do y'all think? Do you think we should trust Cirrus or Akinar? Um, have you played the other ones? I played the first three mists. I have not played uh, Uru or the fifth one or any of that. I played the first three. Riven is very, very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Riven was very, very difficult. You trust the red one, Kendra? You trust the red boy? Does anybody trust blue boy? Or do we all trust the red boy? Alright, guys. So that was that age. Let's go to another one. Okay. What about... Let's go to this one. We're gonna go to the tree. Okay, guys. Same as last time. We have to go get our key for the tree age. I'm a sucker, I know. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm getting help through Ripen. Riven, I have some problems figuring stuff out for the most part. I've needed a lot of nudging. Yeah, I honestly cannot remember because the last time I play played Riven was when I first came out. And I don't have very fond memory memories of it because it was so freaking difficult. Um, but I'm pretty sure we used a guide. I'm pretty sure we did not figure it out on our own. Uh, and my dad and I used a guide. I do not think we, uh, we beat that one on our own. But Mist, we did beat on our own after many days. <laughs> I mean, it was several, it was several long weekends of playing this game because again, I was 10 <laughs> and my dad is um, okay at puzzles, but not all that good. He's just, he's very good at not giving up. So we did meet, beat Mist. Okay. So if we go here, we can see this window is pointing at this very large tree right here, like a suspiciously large tree. Okay. So that's interesting. Let's go back down. And we gotta find a, the key, just like we did for a uh, stone ship. Oh my god, grab it. Go down. There we go. The other thing I think about Riven is probably my memories of it are very different um, than reality. And it probably looks super ugly compared to how I remember it being, like, really super beautiful. Alright, seven, two... Four. Okay. Two. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a little I'm a little bit older. I'm a little bit older. Not by much though. I mean ten and two, that's not that different. At least you're not somebody that's like, wow, I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> Alright, so remember we have to close the door. Alright, and don't worry, we wrote that down. We wrote I have it in my notes, seven, two, and four. Okay, so this this one that we're gonna do next, this is called Channel Wood. This is called Channel Wood. So we gotta do the same thing we did before. We gotta read one of the books. One of the books isn't burnt. So we gotta find the Channel Wood book. Come on, grab it. There we go. Honestly, as someone who's spoiled by modern games, Riven's still beautiful. I have no idea how they managed to make a real 
people blue screened into the game look so good. Would you believe that in the original one of this game, all those videos we've been watching with like Cirrus and Akinar and um, Atris, those were all little videos. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, they look so much better than this. That's my one complaint about this game is the videos of Cirrus, Akinar and um, Atris. The, these VR ones, like, they don't look good. They don't look good. I wish they had scaled up the original videos and, like, redone those somehow, hired new actors something, because for <laughs> you guys that don't know, Cirrus and Akinar are played by the two brothers that created this game. So obviously they're quite old now. They can't play Cirrus and Akinar anymore. So uh, check the options. You can use the classic videos. You can. Even on the Xbox one? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Really? Really, really? Are you sure that's not just on the PC one? I know there's like mods. There was mods for it to fix it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they must have just patched that in on the PC mode. So that was definitely not not an option even on the PC one um, when this game first popped. All right, channel wood. Okay, let's get to reading, guys. It was added by a patch. Oh, I'm so glad they patched it because that's like the one like the view. It just doesn't look good. The little CGI people, it doesn't look good. Yeah, console hasn't gotten it, it looks like. Okay, here we go. Let's read let me take a sip of this drink and then we're gonna read about read about Channelwood. I have called this age Channelwood, and it is a very different world. Though it is exactly how I imagined it, it is still amazing to see it with my own eyes. Water covers this age as far as I can see, except for a small rocky island. Elsewhere, there are only trees which grow directly out of the water. A myriad of thin wooden passages are built just above the water and disappear into the forest. I assume they were built some time ago, for they appear aged. I am eager to discover more about this land and its people, but I have arrived here late and I must rest. I was awakened this morning by strange noises coming from a pathway adjacent to the one on which I has slept. I saw a group of monkey-like people heading in my direction. They had not seen me yet. I did not feel threatened by their presence. Their response to me was one that I would have never expected. After staring at me for a short time, they fell to their knees and began what appeared to be some sort of ceremonial worship. I tried to speak to them, but they did not understand my language. Instead, they indicated through enthusiastic hand motions that I was to follow them. As we walked, I began to notice that the waters below us were changing colors. Slowly, subtly, they would change from deep blue to muddy orange, then from muddy orange to beautifully clear. I was so intrigued by the water, I hardly noticed that we had arrived at a ladder. Climbing the ladder led us to their village, which was about 10 meters above the water and can only be reached by rope ladders that stretch from the lower paths to the village level approximately halfway up the grand trees. It is very interesting watching these people carry out their daily tasks. Even after watching them for hours, I did not understand exactly what they were doing. At sunset, they motioned for me to follow them. I followed the creatures to the doorway of an enormous hut. Strangely, once inside, I found that the hut appeared even larger than it had from the outside. The walls were garnished with bright metals, and in the center of the hut sat the leader of these people. At least he appeared to be their leader, for he sat a meter off the floor in a thick throne. Guards surrounded the strong creature who was dressed in many exotic, colorful fabrics. Next to the leader sat a very old human, at least to some extent. He appears human. His hair, which was only his face on his face and head, was completely gray, almost white, and hung very long around his frail body. His thin head hung limply by the, an almost grotesque neck that could not hold its head up to look at me. But what a surprise this creature could speak my language. Shortly thereafter, I was given a bed with some hand motions that looked to be telling me to go to sleep. I look forward to learning more. As I suspected, the ancient creature is a human, but he is old beyond his own reckoning and seems almost insane. However, the tree dwellers almost revere him as a god. They are treating me now in the same fashion, which makes me feel very uncomfortable. It is almost impossible to understand this old man. His voice is feeble but wild. He has as he has adopted much of the language of the tree dwellers. He himself told me that he had not spoken our tongue in ages. He attempts to explain to me the history of this place. The following is my best translation of what he's told me. Many years ago, the humans and tree dwellers lived together in this place. 
which was a vast island. They interacted very little. The humans dwelt on the ground, and the tweed tree dwellers lived in the high above the humans. Occasionally, the island was disturbed by mysterious rumblings, which happened randomly. Some sort of tectonic or volcanic action, I suspect. The sometimes slight, sometimes heavy tremors would only last a short time. Then they would stop, allowing everything to return to normal. One day, things changed. The rumbling began to grow quickly to unprecedented levels. Soon, it became apparent that the entire island was sinking slowly into the ocean around them. Many of the humans died that day, but not before sacrificing themselves in order to stop the sinking of the island. The humans who lived through this catastrophe moved into the trees where they gradually died out, maybe because they were unequipped for such an environment, but I'm not sure. This is the story the old man communicated to me, although many details are still very unclear to my mind. I am especially confused as to how the humans saved the island from completely sinking. In fact, I doubt the accuracy of that part of the story. The island must have stopped on its own, yet the old man believes in the truth of the story as if he had been there. And the tree dwellers worship him, and apparently all humans, as if they were heroes or gods. The old man ended our conversation today with an event which I will never forget. He began gripping my hands tightly, murmuring something about rest and to sleep. He then said, we have expected you to come sooner. These actions filled me with a sort of immediate dread. With much effort, he stood to his feet. I tried to help, but he pushed me away with more force than I imagined his frail body contained. The tree dwellers quietly surrounded him with very solemn faces. Then they kneeled before him. He walked to each and placed his hand on their heads. All the while, he murmured words which I did not understand. Finally, he turned to me and smiled. Then he closed his eyes and walked out the door and off of the narrow path. High in the trees, the tree dwellers were silent. They began a procession down the nearest rope ladder. As I was descending, I saw several of them pick up the body. He had fallen onto the lower level of walkway and carry it away. He was laying down at the dead end of a short pier-like structure. With the use of some potion, one of the tree creatures lit it. Tree creatures lit the pier on fire and watched it as the flames engulfed him. As this strange funeral proceeded, the waters around the pier changed to a dull green. This morning, I awoke, finding it hard to even believe the previous evening's events. The water is a dull green for as far as I can see now. For some reason, the water no longer shifts color. As I wander throughout the pathways, the creatures watch me, curious to see what I will do next. They are constantly offering me strange objects of affection. I even found food outside the doorway to the room in which I had slept. This is a unique race of beings. I hope to learn their language soon so that I may learn more from them. I have lived on this world for three months off and on, and the tree dwellers have shown great hospitality. I'm even beginning to learn bits of their language. I have decided to return home for an extended stay with my loving wife and two sons, and hopefully return with them. However, I am sure Catherine will once again refuse. I think this age will be a wonderful experience for them all, and I at least look forward to how Cirrus and Akinar will react to its curious inhabitants. Catherine is staying behind as expected. My sons have returned with me, and they enjoy this age very much. They get along very well with the tree dwellers and are picking up their language surprisingly fast. I have no doubt that it will not be too long until they can speak with the tree dwellers much better than myself. I'm leaving tomorrow to check on Os- check on Osmian age. Cyrus has suggested that I allow him and his brother to stay. Though the idea unsettles me, I know the boys are growing up rapidly. The hospitality of these creatures is such that I could think of no better place to leave them alone for a short while. So I will consent to their request. I warn the boys not to take advantage of the respect of the tree dwellers have for their ideas. They seem to understand my warning, and I have faith they will follow it. Much to my dismay, upon arriving in Everdunes, I learned that Pran and her people are continuing to be menaced by the Chotik. I fear for their survival, and I plan on returning to her shortly, after checking on Cirrus and Akinar here. See the Everdunes journal for more information. After watching Cirrus and Akinar, I see they are handling things very well, and I think I can put to rest any fears about leaving them in Channelwood again. For a little longer this time. The tree dwellers seem slightly distressed that I am leaving, but are happy that Cirrus and Akinar are staying behind again. I have been gone for over three days and have been to many different places. I had to tell Cirrus and Akinar about Pran's death today, and they are visibly shaken, although they only remember her from their childhood. Catherine has suggested that it would be wise for Cirrus and Akinar to leave Channelwood for a while, and I have to agree, they will be returning with me when I leave again. 
I've told my sons that they will be returning with me in two days. They spent the entire night telling me of an adventure they experienced in my absence, and it was rather remarkable. It seems they constructed a boat with the creatures that and traveled some ways out into the surrounding waters. I enjoy hearing them talk excitedly of their adventures, and I am reminded of my own adventures as a child. I finally understand why the tree dwellers have been giving me their many inks and insisting I write with them. Looking through some of my past entries, I see now that the inks have changed from their black, I thought they were, to various different colors. I have shown some of the creatures my journal and they laughed and howled. I did not know they had such a sense of humor. Even now, as I look through the very colorful journal, I cannot help but laugh myself. We will be returning tomorrow, so my sons are with the creatures for the last night here. They have told me they would like to come to Channelwood again and also asked if they can visit some other ages alone. Though I will have to think over their request. I believe that they have proven to me that they are trustworthy and responsible. Catherine will also have to help me decide whether they are ready for travel alone. For now, I must give my farewells to the creatures, for I do not know how long it will be until I visit this age again. All right, guys. So I'm going to use my phone to actually take a picture of this page, or of course you could draw it. Whatever makes sense, but remember, part of Mist is you have to take notes. So we're taking notes. And that's the end of the Channelwood book. Okay. So let's go. When we did the tower rotation, it looked at that big tree over there. So let's go check it out. Almost but also managed the good ending in one fifty-six minutes, but speedy achievement, it bugged until Valve can help them. So I'm 25, 26 achievements. Oh no. Oh yeah, there's a speedrunning achievement for this too. I haven't tried to get it yet. Um, I haven't tried to get it yet, but, uh, but I know it's there. Okay, so here's the big tree. So we can see there's, it goes way down into a pit, and then it's also very, very high. Okay, so let's explore a little around there. I hear it's almost impossible to get the controller because of the fireplace. Yeah, it probably would be. <laughs> uh, it probably would be for that final piece. Okay, so here we go. There's a picture of the tree here, so these must be connected, right? We've got a boiler, we've got a little um, twisty valve thing, and oh, here's a safe with three numbers. Remember our key. Oh. Let's try pushing these buttons. Oh, yeah, the controls are a little bit wonky on the, the Xbox controller. Okay, so there are numbers were seven, two, four. So we've got seven, and let's go to two, and then let's go to four. Okay, here we go. By the way, I mentioned this since you've played it before. I hope that's all right. Oh yeah, no, you're fine. It's not a blind play playthrough for me. Um, no story spoilers, though, for the chat and people watching. So in the old version of this game, there used to be a match in here that you had to use, but now there's just an ignite button. So let's turn that. Oh, okay. So I heard the gas come on, it sounds like, and there's a little light there now. What about this? So this is the other thing in the room. See if we can turn this. Oh. Do you hear that? Let's go see what the tree is doing. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Wow, it's going up. It's going up. We can get inside. Oh, we're just going up. <laughs> um, I think they were just trying to make the game a little bit more consistent with steampunk. Now, there is an achievement you can get by riding this all the way up to the top, but this is, an, is not actually what we're supposed to do. So let's go. Let's go down here. The PC version got a patch that had the ka-chunk, ka-chunk sound. Oh, so you see when you press this, it only goes down one. It doesn't, like, stay. So we need to press it a bunch to get back down so that we can get out. All right, escape. But it's just going to go back up on its own. So you can hear it doing that. So here's what we have to do. Let's wait for it to go all the way up. Okay, I don't hear it anymore. I think it's gone all the way up. And let's turn this off. There we go. Ha ha. Run, run, run. Run. Go faster. I'm going to miss it. 
No, I missed it! It's very hard to do on controller. Okay, let's try that again. Man, Karen is my tour guide. It's so great. Oh, you, thank you, Jane. Thank you. Okay, let's try this again. Open sesame. Alright. We can do it, guys. It's just kind of hard. It's just kind of hard on controller. But I know it's possible. Because I did it before. Oh yeah, this game is puzzles on puzzles on puzzles on puzzles. It's amazing. Okay, now we gotta wait. Hear it go all the way up. You can see the PSI on the boiler continues to go. This game's got puzzles on puzzles on puzzles on puzzles. Okay. Let's try this again. Run, run, run. 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 We can make it. Aha! I made it. Why are you saying sorry? Who are you saying sorry to, Irony? Who's your mom? Why are you sorry? Okay, now we go down. Down in the depths. Oh, it's a TikTok audio? Oh. I'm try I try not to go on TikTok. I try not to go on TikTok because I'll spend way too much time on TikTok. Okay. Wow. This looks kind of like what he described with Channelwood. You can DM it to me, yeah. I'll look at it later. This whole thing is added. In previous versions, when you came down here, it was just the book. There was no little walkways evocative of Channelwood or anything like that. Okay. Here we go. Let's go to Channelwood, guys. Okay, so I told you guys before that I get really bad simulation sickness. Um, this age in particular is just like a lot of walking, like a lot, a lot of walking. So we're playing it last and we'll play as, and it in, either until 8.30 um, or, you know, if we finish it, we'll finish it. Um, but yeah, this one triggers my simulation sickness really bad. So I've, I've made sure that it was, you know, the second one that we did. Okay, so you can see we can walk along here. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to this little rocky island right here. Yeah, it's just so much. It's just so much walking. There's just so much walking here. Irony. Um. <laughs> All right. So you can see there's this hose, and you can hear water. So you can hear the water here. And um, we're gonna get this going. that okay. I'm doing okay I'm doing okay so I have it turned on so that it like I have the death stuff turned on um so that you guys could see how that worked but you see it'll tell you also so if you can't hear very well you can still do these sound puzzles it'll tell you so now we've got water flowing so you can hear that all through these pipes so you can see it's called channel wood because it's a wood and then you're channeling water <laughs> Um, <laughs> alright, and then the next thing is you've got these little dials right here. you got these little dials right here, and you can use these levers to switch them and change which way the water flows. So that'll make the water flow this way as opposed to the other way. So if you switch it back, it'll go this way. Alright, so you guys get it, right? Channel wood. Because we're channeling through the woods. <laughs> Alright. So then we have to get this, get the channels to go to the elevator. So I gotta remember where the elevator is. Let me see if the picture I took actually tells you. Let me go open that up. Can't really tell from this, the drawing, the picture I took, where the 
elevator is. But anyway, we need to find the elevator, and then we'll make the water go to it. Elevator. I think that's it over there. So you can hear, like, the water's not flowing anymore. Oh no, that's the dead end. So anyway, there's a dead end. We're gonna have to fix that later. Um, I love hearing aids. I have hearing aids that I literally never wear. Why don't you wear your hearing aids, Irony? I bet they would help you. That's what they're for. Aw, oh, thank you. I must look really pretty. You're the second person to tell me that, Irony, so it must be true. Okay, let's try this way. You can still hear the water, and you can see it says water flowing. Oh no, this is another dead end. Oops. Let's try again. We gotta get around to that elevator. Maybe it's this one. My ears get very tired of them after a while overstimulation. Oh. Ooh. I don't have hearing aids or anything like that, but I feel like someday I probably will. But not today. Oh, we can go ahead and do this. This isn't the elevator, but we made the water go here, so here we go. Let's do this. Whoa! This is another thing in the game I don't like. The animation of this water splashing looks really bad. I don't know why the texture is looks so bad like that. Uh, yeah, I don't understand why they allowed that to happen. But they did! <laughs> so... It's weird though, when I first got them, it's like, that's what birds sound like. Oh, were you um, born with poor hearing irony? Like it didn't develop later? Um, so you didn't ever hear them before? Yeah, kinda, I see. Okay, so we come around here, here's that dead end again. So, where it kinda drops off, but watch this. Wow, we extended the pipe. All right, so let's go back. And let's see now if we can get the water to go to the elevator. Because remember, we learned in the book that there's two levels here. There's this ground level that the humans lived on, and then there's the upper level that the tree dwellers lived on. So we, we probably need to get to that upper level. Because it was just the tree dwellers here when Atris and Sirius and Akinar came here. So that's where we need to go. I could hear them just not on that level. Oh, I see, I see. I'm sure that due to loud music and also hereditary, because my dad has hearing aids in his old age, that I'll eventually need hearing aids. At some point, I will get old and my ears will get messed up. Oh, no, not that way. That wasn't right. We gotta go back one more. Okay. We gotta flip this one. We want it to go to where... We extended that pipe. Oh wait, no. It's this elevator, right? This is the elevator we need to get to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oop, wrong one. I hope I remembered the right elevator. Well, anyway, we went ahead and did the path to the other elevator, so that's fine. This is the elevator we need first. I was doing the wrong one. That's okay. We'll, we'll need that elevator later. Itchy nose. Okay. Now, let's go up. Oh, this one makes me close the door, too. Just like the other elevator, you have to close the doors before the elevator will go up. Safety feature. They're looking out for you. Ooh. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's like this just beautiful swamp land. Okay, now we're on the second level. Wow. And you can see it's all these, these tree-dwelling huts, just like before. Just like we saw, um, just like we were explained about in the book. You can see why, like, this amount of walking, this is just a very large age, and there's just lots of, lots and lots of walking and turning and walking and turning. But this is neat, right? You hear, you guys hear all the cicadas? I love how the floors are still, like, looking very precarious, just like in the original mist. Board's missing. 
Yep. <laughs> Uh, in the original game, these floors were pretty terrifying, and I see that they still are, so that's great. <laughs> I don't remember exactly where you're supposed to go here, so we're just going to wander around a little bit. This is the other reason this age, like, triggers my, um, triggers my, uh, simulation sickness so badly. Ooh, there's another elevator over there. What's that all about? See if we can get over there. But yeah, that's the one thing about this game changing from like pictures that you click on to like a fully 3D rendered world is that this age in particular is like, it's a lot. It's a lot if you struggle with playing first person games, you know? All games should have a third person mode. Uh, FOV sliders should be more the norm. You don't get a lot of FOV sliders on console games, which is a shame. Because if I have an FOV slider, it is very helpful uh, in regards to trying not to trigger the simulation sickness. Like, the wider FOV is a huge help for that. Okay, let's keep going and see. It's really easy to get lost up here, because <laughs> it's kind of a big area compared to other areas in the game. You'll sell the stone ship age was not big at all. Okay, here's that elevator. Okay, but that door is locked. What's this? This is the other elevator that we saw. Oh, I have to close the door. That's right. Safety feature. Okay, let's go back down. Oh, it's not working. That's interesting. Can I open this? Doesn't look like it. Okay. So... Hmm... There must be something else we have to do. There's a lever somewhere that opens that door so that we can get back down using the stairs. But we have to remember where it is. Is it in my picture? Doesn't look like it is. Like, see how scary this is? <sighs> Walking on these bridges like this. Alright, where's that lever? It's like around one of these, like in the middle or something. So I remember as a game, as a kid, um, playing this game, just like spending so much time in this particular age because I just thought it was, it was just fascinatingly beautiful. Like just the idea of being up in trees like this, I've always found intensely interesting. Like when I played uh, EverQuest, I would always try to start in Kelethin, um, the Wood Elf City, because it was up in trees like this. And I was totally fascinated with that. Also, in the book series Dragonlance, there was um, the main, the first town that they, that the characters are in, is called Solace, and it's it's a, up in the tree city like this. And I just found that I just find that concept completely fascinating. So I would just click around this age. For ages, ha ha ha. <laughs> um, because I just find the whole concept of it so amazing. All right, come on. Where is the switch? I cannot remember. But the one thing I do know is, remember for this game, you can do everything you need to do simply by using your powers of observation. So we will find the switch. Place is very Argonian from Elder Scrolls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another good example. I just love that idea. I love the idea of, like, a city up in the trees. You know? It's so cool to me.
Alright. I want to say it's it's one of these, like, middle huts or something. It's not one of the square ones. I'm pretty sure it's one of the round huts that has the switch. Is it that one over there? It might be that one over there. It's that dead end. Let's check this one first, and then we'll turn around and check that other one. Because we need to open that door. Because that elevator is not moving. So we got to get the water to go to that elevator. And we know how to do it, but if we go back down the other elevator, then it's not going to work out. Because then we won't be able to um, get back up the same way. But if we open that door, then we can use the stairs to always go between the first and second floor. Haha, uh -huh. there it is. You're what I was looking for. There we go. Now that door should be open. I have a feeling that the guys that made this game must have really particularly loved this age. Just because it's so big compared to the others. Am I going the right way? I don't think I'm going the right way. Where are those stairs? Oh, that pot's in my way. That's why I can't walk forward. Is that it? Yeah, that's it over there. Okie dokie. So now we can go back down without hindrance. So let's do that. Whee! Okay, I gotta look at the chat again. Because <laughs> the spinning definitely fucks my up. Fucks up my world. Oh my god. There we go. Hey, Jane. <laughs> okay, so now you make the water go here. Let's find this lever. Okay, there we go. If I'm on delay, yeah. Not you're not your delay is not too bad. It didn't take me very long to walk down those stairs. So your delay is really not that bad. Okay, here we go. Now, it's going to here. So let's see if that fixed the elevator. I'm looking at the chat again, Jane. So we can pretend you said hi, Karen, now. <laughs> the delay is really not too bad. It's only a little bit. It's only a little bit. Because you got to take the time to type it out, too. Which takes a second, you know? And then i got to read it. All right. So, did that make the elevator go? Yes, it is open now. All right. Remember, we got to close the door. Now let's go again. Once more. Wow. Now we're up in the clouds. All right, beautiful. We're way above the water now. Let's see what's up here. Oh, 
Oh, this looks way fancier than the tree dwellers we had before. Okay. I hear you. <laughs> Creepy, right? And he's got those masks again. Okay. Well, I'm scared. <laughs> All right. Anything around here? What's this? Oh, just another. This is another way to go. Okay. Well, let's go this way. I guess that was the tree dweller language that we learned about before. Oh, blue page, blue page. this oh it's the same one. Oh, close up i hope i pushed the right button my dear brother very interesting device you have here. I'm not racing anything important in life. <laughs> wow. Remember, he is preparing. Preparing for what? Page. Wow, okay, okay, more sibling rivalry. More sibling rivalry. Alright guys, I'm very sorry. Listen to these beautiful sounds while I go pee real quick and then I'll be right back and we'll talk about wrapping up the stream. Sorry about that. I could not hold it for the five more minutes. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Let's see if we can um, find anything else. We got a blue page. We're going to need a red page, too. So maybe the red page is up here on the third floor as well. Let's see if we can find it. We'll get the red page, and then I think we'll, we'll call it. Oh, is this? Oh, this is the same elevator. Let's go the other way. I am. I'm Speedy Gonzalez of peeing. Very strong peeing muscles. Oh, here's another fancy door. Okay, here's the other brother's bedroom. He's got, looks like some, some gorgonzola right there, some blue cheese. What's this? Oh, half of a, half of a note. Okay, we're gonna take a picture of this too. This looks like it might be important, guys. Okay. If it's yellow, let it mellow. No way! That's gross! I absolutely flush. Alright, he's got some bottles here, some ink. What's this? Okay. Oh, a drawer. Whoa! Dagger, knife thing! That's not cool. Let's see, is there anything in this drawer? Oh, some crackers! Here's a little washing basin. Do you stream right by- yes, actually the bathroom's like literally right there. It's right next to me. <laughs> Alright, I guess the page is not in here. I can't- I'm not- I can't remember exactly where it is in this age. I think- I thought it was in this room. But I'm not seeing it.
because there's that ripped page that we need. Where is it? Might have to find it next stream because it is 8 30. It's time to stop. Actually, let's do that. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and save here. And next time when we come back to Miss next Thursday, we will grab the other page from this age, get out of it, and then continue on. All right, so let's go ahead and save. I'll make, yeah, we'll make another save game one. Yes, that's fine. Okay, so we're in save game one. All right, guys, let's switch over to there. Let's find somebody to raid. Uh, yes, that's fine. I'm so happy I was able to share some of Mist with you guys, and I really can't wait to finish it next week. Um, it's going to be really awesome. Ooh, mute. Hush Twitch. Okay. All right, guys. Um, let's go ahead. Let's raid our friend Venom. He's doing Dead by Daylight. So let's raid him. Venom. Oh, thank you so much for the applause. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really, really enjoyed this. I love this game so much. I can't wait to show you more. Um, if you're interested in seeing something more spoiler free, then download this game, uh, play it before next Thursday, because next Thursday, we're going to get back into it and try to finish the rest of Mist and, and show you guys the rest of it. Okay. There we go. We're going to raid Venom. Let me actually click on his stream too. There we go. Yes, he's playing Dead by Daylight. All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, I will not see you on Saturday because I'm celebrating my husband's birthday, but I will see you next Thursday for more Mist. All right, thank you guys so much. And don't forget, of course, to make it a great day.